Like the vampires from From Dust Till Dawn, they could not grow their arms back, could they? Correct. No, I don't believe so. If they suffered a big wound like that, they were living with it. I mean, sure, I think the wound could close, but we're also talking about a different breed of vampire in Dust Till yeah, Dawn. Yeah, right? that's true. Those vampires were much more about body mutilation and physically destroying their prey than, say, Blade, where they want to bite the neck and drink the blood. Got it. Those and they just they just want to sip on blood from chalices. You apart. Right. Those vampires were going to rip your arm off and drink your blood like it was a, a boot. You know what I mean? <laughs> they were going to uh, beer fest and turn the boot. Exactly. Remember to turn the arm. Ah, he's a lefty. What are you doing? Blood fest. There wow. It is. Oh, my gosh. The good ideas just start flowing. Imagine that. Everyone, like, just vampire, goth vampires... Then you yeah. have the the body like the weird vampires, and you get the Transylvanian vampires. Yep, with their wool cloaks. I mean, they had they had everyone from every Canadian, Australian. They're all still the stereotypes that they were from Beer Fest, but they're just vampires. <laughs> yep, I love it. And there's just scared people in cages all over the place. Right, we're just hoping that they don't get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> this movie sounds kind of great. The movie's from the point of view of the la guy in the last cage. <laughs> we need another one. Oh, man. Like, he eventually starts cheering for the German vampires because he knows they can shut everybody down and he won't get drunk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no sudden death. No no overtime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. And then they're like, the winner gets the last guy. And you're like, oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> That's their prize at the end is the <laughs> last guy. And th just the hope sinks. You're happy, then you just get, oh, man, they played me. That was, that uh -huh. was terrible. Now, uh, before I, we, we move on, I just want to drop one cool thing on you. So one thing that I think is really funny. So movie franchises with one-word titles, like like that are weapons, such as Saw, Blade, Machete, and Hatchet. So uh -huh. Blade has a, a tomato meter average of 46. Saw has one of 28%. Machete's 50%, and Hatchet's 55 So none of them have what you would call a fresh average right. and they're Impressive. all one word Over. titles saw blade hatchet machete these franchises and so none of them are above 60 percent. and 60 is considered fresh yeah i just think it's funny that one word movie titles that feature a weapon a sawing type weapon yeah are rotten it just makes me happy i just want maybe that's a theme right there maybe that's just what it, people hate, hate seeing one word titles of something that could cut you you just hurt my heart that machete outscored blade Ah, oh, Machete don't text. Oh. Now, the good news is is that the audience score for Blade sixty eight percent, so it's higher than Saw, Machete, and Hatchet. But Hatchet and Machete beat out Blade and Saw. But if you think about it, well, Blade. I mean, Hatchet and Machete are really seem like blunt force instruments. Blade Correct. could be a myriad of <laughs> things. Really good. And it Saw, really Saw just seems nasty. Like that's why it's the lowest, right? Because to saw you just got to go up and down but the this is a weird <laughs> it is but, but i'm rolling with it yeah you know, it just makes me machete happy that machetes definitely you don't see somebody using any sort of finesse when carrying a machete at all it's always <laughs> to be a swing from over the head down to either foliage or what have you Oof. yeah and that's not gonna be pretty is uh saws up close and has to be oscillating back and forth blade <laughs> There's a couple of different things, but hatchet is another one that requires a lot of uh, a lot of get up and go, a lot of a swing. You know what I mean? And maybe yeah. another overhead. So maybe that's what it is. The effort to use the one word weapon in your title is how high your uh, critic score is going to be. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so now we just need to make the movie Scythe. Wow. We might really be on to something. We could be the first fresh one. Yeah. Scythes are interesting because I, if I'm in a tight corridor, I'm – well, unless he wraps it around me, then pulls the scythe towards me, then you're in a right. lot of trouble. But if you're tight corridoring, I want to fight the villain from Scythe. Yeah. But if I'm in a cornfield, uh-uh. Give, well, me, give me hatchet all day. Or give me saw all day. Because Scythe is in pre-production right now. <laughs> What's the villain in Scythe? So it just in, says, a disgraced FBI agent is tasked with. Hold on, I got to get my movie voice for this. Right. 
Here we a go. disgraced FBI agent is tasked with finding the Grim Reaper killer after he escapes from a prison transport in North Carolina on prom night. Breaks <laughs> into a hardware store. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not making it he, up. He bursts into a, a farm and grabs a scythe from and a... And kills a... the owner's daughter. <laughs> scythe! Scythe. Scythe 2. Back no at cast. it. Yeah. <laughs> Scythe 3. Again. Yeah. Scythe 3. It's not over. <laughs> Scythe 4. He's back. Scythe 5. The Wait. one where another copycat killer is the villain. Scythe 6. Are you still there? <laughs> Scythe 7. Psych. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? And that's the quality one. Scythe 7. Yeah. That's the one where they finally bring in uh, Christian Slater, and yep. he revives, revives the franchise. And it's a little too late, so it becomes this cult classic where everyone's like, have you seen Scythe 7 Psych? It's, yeah. it's really meta, and it's... <laughs> And it's, they almost it, lost me on Scythe 6, are you still there, but... Mm. Man, like, there's a scene in 7 where there's someone's watching Scythe 1 on a TV, but then the Scythe killer's still in it. Yeah. And by this point, Christian Slater is the son of the hero from the first one. Right, who's still disgraced, even in 7. Wow. So he was disgraced through seven films, six, seven films? That's right. He never gets his redemption. That's why Scythe keeps coming back. Oh, that's amazing. And, and it's, oh, wait, in Scythe 5, you find out that Scythe is the disgraced FBI agent. Wow. Oh. It, it's what, and you know, the, the creative team from the first two came back for seven. <laughs> so you can tell that they really were able to bring the gore effects. Yep. Yeah, seven, what What I think I like about seven is is the way it, 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 it it's meta, but it's not owned by meta, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's breaking the mold. Yeah, you just don't want something too meta. That's why you want half and half, like Scream, where it gets it, but it's still really bloody. Yeah. This wow. one has a lot more story. There's still a good enough amount of gore, but the story's actually grabbing me. The thing about the scythe, too, is when you have a saw or a hatchet, it's just one person, right? You're just hatcheting one, one person. Right. But with a scythe, I mean, you're partying. Like, you could wipe out four or five people. Hundred percent. Here's the thing. Spin in a circle. Oh my gosh. At a line should... dance. He goes into a line <laughs> dance and just starts spinning in a circle. It's achy breaky heart in the background. Don't tell my heart. <laughs> my achy breaky heart. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... Until at the end, it's just him. And then there's people inside of the scythe circle, and they're just running as fast as they can. Right. Like like they're in a turnstile door. Yeah. And there's <laughs> uh... <laughs> Oh, man. That'd be... Wow. Yeah. And it turns and out there's it, two of them, and they think they're safe inside the Scythe Circle? Right. Oh, my gosh. That's the best part of Psy. Scythe 2. Scythe 7. Psych. All right. My mind's blown. So let's take a quick break, and then when we come back, we will talk more Blade. We will be right back. Welcome back to Movies, Films, and Flicks. And I just wanted to drop something on you about how this relevant this movie has stayed. And maybe it's because of our age, and maybe it's just because of, of what keeps things in the press. But I don't know if you remember, but I, uh, about a month ago, three weeks ago, I got about over, I got over 350 lists from people. Mm. I think 350, somewhere in there, of people ranking their top, their five favorite superhero films. Doesn't matter what they were. Didn't have to be in order. It just had to be their five favorite, not best, superhero films. Right. So on all these lists, I ended up getting Dark Knight was 123 on 123 of the list. Spider-Man 2 was on 73. Logan was on 69. Captain America Winter Soldier, 65. Avengers Endgame, 59. And that was tied with Into the Spider-Verse, which also had 59. Uh, it's a fantastic movie. And so, but at the bottom of the table, which it wasn't horrible. We had Blade 2 with 14 and Blade on 13, which means they appeared on 13 and 14 of the list. Now we have... Cap 1, that wasn't really on there. We had Thor 1 and 2 that weren't on there. The Hulk movies weren't on there. Daredevil. I mean, we're talking 30 other superhero films that didn't make it. Yeah. So Blade and Blade 2 aren't Dark Knight level, which nothing can be. But they're also not uh, Punisher Warzone level, which is beautiful. So 
I guess that's nice to know, right? Is that while they're not on many lists, they're still they'll still pop up, unlike some movies, which I think is fair. Because for me, it's top five, right? Top five for me. But uh, dude, this doesn't belong up in the echelons of Spider Verse, does it? But I think it does. I think it does. Yeah, I think we're talking different tones here. Yeah, you're right. I think movies. I, I think superhero movies can't all be thrown under one single boom superhero. I, I think you need to break it up a little bit because Into the Spider Verse definitely can hang with some great movies, but you wouldn't compare it to something like Blade, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a great point. And you wouldn't compare uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron. Ant-Man and the Wasp, it's just different feels. Yeah. I mean, sure, there are heroes, but it's it, they're completely different. No, my... I got you. And that's, but do you think that's the problem? I don't think most people think like you, Jack, because that's rational. So, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, right. and, and to be fair, I think Dark Knight's a great film, work of art. Like, I've, I've gotten, I mean, I figured out how much cash was in that pile and, in the Dark Knight, like, that's been a great post for me, yeah. but by the way, that is my favorite. That's number one for me. I think that's the the best made comic book movie. If you're going to throw them all into one of all time, and I, I just like that it stays grounded. And it and it uh, the biggest part that annoys me about the Dark Knight is that everyone just goes the Joker represents chaos and anarchy. No, he doesn't. No, the Joker had an entire plan set in motion. A B C D laminated, tailored suits. So he wants to cause chaos, and he could be considered a force of chaos, but a very right. organized, controlled chaos. So he I, even it's... names himself the agent of chaos in the movie, but I, I disagree. The Joker does not represent chaos. I think Gotham City represents chaos, mm. personally, because they a product of their – well, I mean, the Joker and Batman are a product of their environment, right? Yeah, definitely is tailored he was calculated from the first frame to the last one so to, to call him chaos i, I disagree yeah. i mean sure, some of the things he did caused chaos but that was intentional exactly so it just i guess i get annoyed i love the movie but there's people really reading it wrong but then i'm just the grumpy man in the corner hating on a very good film <laughs> so hey kids <laughs> Go watch you Sife 7. don't appreciate Heath Ledger. Go watch Sife 7, psych. Uh, yeah, but I guess for me, I just, I don't know why Blade doesn't pop up in the conversation more. And a after I was reading about it, like, it it's really interesting what they said, too. The the head of New Line, Mike DeLuca, said, I'll make it for $40 million if you can get Denzel Washington, 35 if you can get Wesley Snipes, and 20 if you can get Loris Fishburne. So they... They had three people in mind. They got Wesley Snipes. They got their $35 million, which in 98 was really good. And I think they, I don't know, man, it's this, this movie in 98, I don't know. I, I just I, no, I, this may be an unpopular opinion, opinion because I love Denzel Washington. I think he's extraordinarily talented. I don't think Blade is as successful with Denzel compared to Wesley Snipes. No, and I, I think you're right. And when you think about Denzel, you know, he has done some physicality and equalizer, the hurricane. I mean, he was excellent but just the the overall like denzel's great like, listen he's an oscar winner he's a top tenor but i think just the attitude and action and the way wesley snipes care, care like snipes embodied blade and so you're able to see blade as blade not really wesley snipes and as excellent as denzel washington is i mean malcolm x is just amazing and training day i mean actually we could just sit here and name all of his movies we Colin. really could <laughs> and, and it but yeah no i, I think you're right going. This movie got it. It understood it. And it, oh, yeah. And a big part of Blade is the physicality. And one yeah. thing that I wanted to, not just him standing in a room and his presence, but when he's going back after, by the way, we watched this last night. And a funny story real quick. My son was watching parts of this with us, which I had to, you know, okay, leave the room for a second for a couple of them. But at the end, when he's coming back, and I'll, I'll circle to my point, I swear, the security guard comes to Deacon and goes, Deacon, we've got an intruder. My son looks at me and goes, oh, I hope his name doesn't start with a B. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure it does. Oh, but that's then, amazing. When those uh, generic uh, sequenced henchmen are coming in, Blade does this little Jeet Kune Do thing where he bounces up yeah. and down. And the way he moves his body and the way he's fighting, you can tell, oh, he knows what he's doing. He's yeah. not doing that for show. He's doing that because he he's fully confident in what he's about to do. And that makes the character even 